folks, welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to show you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. For our eShop customers, all backlogs of in-stock orders are now completed and will be arriving in the coming days, if not already in the hands of some of our customers. Pre-orders are still being worked on, but we have everything well under control, so rest assured. In case you missed it, two Monster Apocalypse playthrough videos went up over the weekend right here on our channel, one in French and one in English. I'll be doing my regular videos this week, as long as I'm not in jury duty, that is. So, unless you hear different, I'll be doing another Mythic Plays video on Thursday and another live Q&A on Friday. Now, we don't have any news on Reichbusters Project Vril or Hell the Last Saga, but let's get to everything else. For Joan of Arc this week, we wanted to give as detailed an update for shipment and fulfillment as possible. First of all, for North America and VFI, they are sorting through the containers and order lists now, and will start processing as soon as Steam Watchers is done. Meeple Logistics in the EU is processing the first batch of orders now and email address verifications will go out very soon. Additionally, the last three containers bound for the EU are finally in transit, so we can look forward to those arriving. The UK shipment is scheduled to hit port on November 6th and the VR distribution shipment for Australia and New Zealand is scheduled to hit port on November 9th. As usual, we'll continue updating you as new milestones are reached and getting your product to you. And we want to thank you all so very much for your support and patience. For Steam Watchers today, in North America, all the orders and address verifications have been processed and shipments have begun. Due to it being a new system of prepackaging for Fulix and D6, it will initially be a slower process than you experienced with QML, but rest assured that your shipments are underway. Canadian orders have already been pulled and are in transit to the D6 hub in Canada and will be sent out from there. Everyone else worldwide should either have their product in hand or know that it's on the way. So if you have any questions, please contact our customer support team at support at mythicgames.net and we'll do our best to help out. And of course, we want to thank all of you for your support and patience as well. For Super Fantasy Brawl Round 2 today, I just wanted to replicate our brief update from last week to say that your orders are currently being packaged up at the factory and being prepared for shipment. Printing of Super Fantasy Brawl Round 2 has been completed. A bit ago, we alerted our Solomon Kane backers to the decision we made to hold its Wave 2 shipment back until we could ship it along with Super Fantasy Brawl Round 2 products in the same containers. Now, Oversight kept us from posting this same update on Round 2 campaign page, and we apologize for that, but we're trying to rectify that oversight here. To clarify, we're planning on shipping Super Fantasy Brawl Round 2 and Solomon Kane Wave 2 together in mid to late November. As usually seems to be the case, I'd imagine we can expect some factory stills and photos soon, so if those are indeed shared from the factory, I promise we'll get them in front of your eyes as soon as we can. Now, for you brawlers who live in or near France, you might want to see if you can make it to the Ludigeek Festival happening November 13th through 14th. On Saturday, November 13th, they'll be hosting a 1v1 Super Fantasy Brawl tournament. To register, you only need to send your details to mike at mythicgames.net or ludigeek at hotmail.com. You need to act quickly, though, because registration for the event closes on Friday, November 5th, so don't miss out. For more information about the festival, check them out on Facebook at facebook.com backslash ludigeek backslash. For Darkest Dungeon today, in the past few updates, we've been giving you regular information on the development of the game. For those of you who haven't been reading or watching everything, a general summary would simply be that the core game and Crimson Court expansion have been fully laid out in English, 
and that we have the final old road tutorial and the final rule book laid out as well, which were the last missing pieces of the puzzle for the core pledges. We've printed out close to final copies at a local printer and have sent them out for blind playtesting and we'll be dedicating all of November to external playtesting to ensure everything is 100% smooth. By the end of November, we will also start the layout process of the expansions in English too. The pace that this will go will be determined by the amount of feedback we get for the Crimson Pledge from the playtesters and we'll keep you posted on how those progress. We're also very excited to announce a new collaboration. A new language is now added for Darkest Dungeon, which will now also be coming in Chinese. We're very happy to inform you that we have signed a deal with Banana Games to bring you a localized version of the game. With several well-known games in their portfolio, like the Architects series, Raiders of the North Sea, Rurik, Dawn of Kiev, Role Player, and Sleeping Gods, we're confident we found a great partner to bring this project to life in the Chinese market. Now please note that the project will remain exclusive, meaning that it will not go through general distribution, but will be available only through our partner. We'll provide information in due time about how this will be made available, so please bear with us until we can give you further details. As you can understand, we won't have many thrilling things to report from now on as we're entering the less glamorous period of the game creation phase. But we'll find ways to keep you informed and entertained, rest assured. We've been down that old road before, and maybe next time we'll take you with us. For Six Siege today, the team has been busy updating operator profiles and rules. The main changes were driven by user experiences, and we wanted the operator profiles to be as legible as possible, even from a distance. We realized that we used a lot of the same wording and created situations where some text boxes were quite full and dense. We decided to create a set of keywords like throwable but for other occurrences. This means that we can summarize the action, quote, deploy to a space in the operator's line of sight, end quote, into a single word that is easily identifiable. Creating keywords is something that, uh, it's a bit tricky as you don't want it to interfere with the overall accessibility of the game, and it also forces you to remember one tiny extra rule, but, we feel that the trade-off is well worth it in this case because we added a very few number of them and they're the ones that are present on most, if not all, of the operators anyway. We also changed the few ongoing gadgets like Montaigne's shield and Glass's sight, for example. Instead of a cube, we're going to have a double-sided token. The team also put the finishing touches on the layout of the rule book and are running some external play tests as well. All this brings us closer to production and for you to get your games in hand. So thank you for your support and patience. For Enchanters and Darklands today, remember that you can pre-order Darklands through the month of December. We also wanted to make note that a couple of playthroughs have been recently posted on Enchanters. One in French, right here on our own YouTube channel, and another in English over on the Dice Tower YouTube channel from when I was there for their Autumn Spectacular. You can find the links to them in the descriptions below, so go check those out. Now, there's also been a bit of a groundswell recently in questions regarding the cards and dividers uh, would be reprinted and sent out to the backers of the East Quest campaign. As always, we've, we've told you that we'll be reprinting those during the retail printing of the game, which will go into full production by the end of the year. We're currently putting the final touches on the files to be sent to the factory, so that's going to come soon. Last week, we ran a contest for a core box of Super Fantasy Brawl, and today, I'd like to announce the winner. Soloed Quest is our winner with his or her entry that was randomly picked out of the 22 entries submitted. There was also one entry that I didn't count because it didn't follow the directions of adding hashtag PhoenixLine in the comment. 
So congratulations, Soloed Quest. Please contact me at sam at mythicgames.net and I'll make sure your core box of Super Fantasy Brawl is set up to be sent to you as soon as it can be. Today is the day! The Monster Apocalypse board game Kickstarter launches today at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is going to be an epic campaign and you won't want to miss it at all. The core box will contain eight classic Monster Apocalypse monster miniatures and more than 40 support units spread over four factions. Guard, Pterosaurs, Planet Devourers, and Lords of Cthulhu. It will also contain over 20 plastic buildings, a strong double-sided mounted game board, and all the dice, monster cards, tokens, unit cards, and other player boards necessary for play. There will also be a Battle Royale three to four player expansion box, which will contain everything necessary for playing 2v1 and 2v2. Sets of dice and additional tokens, player dashboards, a two-sided game board. One side is going to be three players map, and on the other side it'll be the four player side. This Battle Royale expansion will be completely new and will feature five brand new Apex monsters. The ultimate evolution of iconic creatures from the game and can be purchased independently without the need to add the core box. So I'm looking at you, veteran Monpok players. So don't forget to go to the link provided and click the Notify Me on Launch button if it's before 2 p.m. And we'll hope to see you there. Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions or if you just want to see what wonders he might be able to show. As per usual, we're running a Kickstarter campaign, so I would imagine that he'll be primarily focused on Monster Apocalypse, but also willing to answer any questions you might have. As mentioned earlier, my wife and I will be doing a live playthrough on Thursday this week at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time in our Mythic Play series, and I'll also be doing a live Q&A on Friday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific Time to answer any questions you may want to ask me about whatever. That's it for today, though. Stay safe, play some games while you're at it, and we'll see you on the flip side. Take care.